Hi, it's Josie and today I've got three tips for you to help you keep your horse out of your bubble. What do I mean by keep him out of your bubble? You should have some personal space that your horse needs to stay out of. If he doesn't understand that he needs to stay out of it, that's how you get run over and how you get hurt um, when you're handling your horse. My horses all know where my personal space is and they know that they can't come into it. So I just will reiterate here that it's called personal space because it's personal. My personal space may be different to your personal space. And to be completely frank with you, personal space for me can also depend on the horse that I'm working with. Rebel, I like to be a little bit more out of my personal space. Spider can come into my personal space a bit closer to me. And one of the ways, if you're wondering what is my personal space, I'm going to give you the definitive feeling of it. So if you're standing here and your horse steps in, he won't step in, come on. And you feel like you need to step backwards, your horse has stepped into your personal space. And you need to teach him to stay out of it. So that's staying out of your bubble. So how do you go about doing that? Well, first of all, your horse has to be able to read your body language. Um, and a good way of knowing whether he can or not is when you're leading him. So when you lead your horse, when you walk off, he should come. I like my horses to walk a little bit back behind me unless I ask them up. I have done a video on how I like to lead my horses. I'll link it up here. Um, and so he should, your horse should read your body language. So when I stop, he should stop, he shouldn't go past me. If I go backwards, he should go backwards too. Rebel was a little bit daydreaming there, so we're just going to, this is training happening as you see it, we're just going to, that's better. So he should go backwards as well. So I've done that video, but your horse has to understand your body language. You talk to him with your body language, whether you know you're doing it or not. Um, and I believe it's important that everybody knows about body language. That's something that I teach in Basic Horse Training Academy. Your horse also gives you body language that you need to be able to uh, understand. And stepping into your personal space is actually him um, showing that he would like to move you out of the way and be, I, I guess, the boss. But I hate using that terminology because uh, it evokes people getting cross and things like that when you don't need to. So what you need to do when your horse, he's not gonna like this, when your horse comes into your personal space is you need to be able to get him out. So you need to have a tool of some form. It can be your rope, it can be a whip, and how much pressure you use depends on your horse. So tip number two is to pick the correct tool for your horse, but if uh, you only have a rope, that's fabulous. I'm going to show you what to do with a rope because I use a rope halter and 12 foot leads. Wherever I am, I always have a tool with me. Always swing your tool in a downwards manner. And to get the horse out of your space, the best way I like to do it is to explain to him that this is my space here and he can't be in it. I don't aim this at him, I aim it at my space. And when he steps out of it, I um, take the pressure away. The pressure is me adding it. I don't care if he goes over there or over there, as long as he gets out of my space. So that's my number one tip. You need to understand your own body language and get your horse to understand your body language too. So that if I wanted Rebel to go back, I could just ask him with some body language here to step back and he will step back out of my personal space. You saw me with the whip saying, this is my personal space. That's how I start in the beginning. And then later, I just want him to pick up, oh, <coughs> pardon me, off my body language in it. So tip number two is when your horse understands that, you need to make it consistent. It's very unfair if I have this big space around me and today, Rebel can come into it and then tomorrow I tell him off. 
very different if you do what I just did then. I actually invited him in. That's fine, I don't tell him off, but now I'm gonna ask him back. And if he doesn't move, which he didn't move off my little bit of body language, I still want that other foot back. Then I just ask him out. It's never done at the horse, remember? That's the thing I want you to remember. This is never aimed, never once did I aim that at him. It's at the ground, this is my space. But you must be consistent. Horses want black and white. They don't understand areas of grey. And when you have areas of grey, that is how you end up with either a super anxious horse or a completely shut down horse because they just, they go, I don't understand. One minute it's okay, the next minute it's not. I'm just gonna ignore everything. Or you get the poor horse that has high anxiety because that they don't ever know what's right and what's wrong. Just because your horse has to stay out of your bubble does not mean that you can't give your horse some love. Rebel's creeping, he can go out. So when your horse has to stay out of your bubble but you want to give him some love, that's fine. You walk in. You are allowed to come in here and do what you like. He is just not allowed to encroach in yours, obviously, unless you ask him in. Now Rebel just walked off after me, but that's okay because he walked into my personal space. I felt like I needed to step back. So if I ask him in, that's fine. He's just not allowed to come in of his own accord. Tip number three is to read your horse. Understand how much um, pressure you need to use to explain to your horse what you want him to do and choose an appropriate tool. Um, in the beginning, if you have not been aware of your body language and the horse, uh, you haven't been reading the horse and he hasn't been reading you because he gave up ages ago because you were inconsistent with it, it might take you a little bit to, to tell him and inform him that, hey, now I'm actually aware of it and I'm going to be consistent. And so we are going to start from scratch here and you might need to move up the pressure scale a little bit to uh, get him to do something. But I promise you that if you, I'm just gonna pop these down. So, so a flag will be quite a lot of pressure and too much pressure for some horses. And if you don't know how to use it or you use it incorrectly, you can really evoke your horse's flight response and end up getting hurt. I do use that, but my uh, usual tool is actually just a plain dressage whip. I have a bit of a stiffer one here as well. Or, as I said, my rope, because these are my everyday tools, this rope halter and rope. With the pressure scale, just remember, how much do you need? Read your horse. Is he a little bit like Rebel who will need a little bit of a wake up? Trust me, he does. Or like my other horse, Rihanna, who I actually have to keep it really on the down low for her. Make sure you read your horse and every single time you ask something for the horse, even if it's the 10th time you're asking her, you start from the lowest level and you move up. So once your horse understands your body language, once you've been consistent with it, and once you've worked out how much pressure you need to use and then worked at always using the lowest amount of pressure you can. So every time you start something with your horse, you start at the low level and work your way up. You should be able to use barest minimum of pressure. You should be able to do things very subtly with your horse because that is the aim. We want subtle, soft stuff. So I should be able to wake Rebel up here and ask him to go back and come forward to me, draw him in and go back and draw him in and go back and draw him in. Good boy. Very good boy. If you're the sort of person that likes to know everything about horses, if you want to know what makes them tick, why do they spook, how to stop them spooking, if you would like to know how to read their body language, how they read yours, how you project yours at your horse, that is the sort of stuff I teach in Basic Horse Training Academy. In the link in the description under the video is a link to take you to Basic Horse Training Academy where I will show you around through the courses there and in the academy and you can have a look and if it's something you like, I would love to see you there. I would love to share all of this with you. And thanks for watching.
Good boy. Good boy. Can you drop your head, please? So, so once you've been, so once your horse. <laughs>